Hey everybody, it's Don here. I'm one of the community leaders from over at the Cartographers Guild and today I'm going to talk to you about doing a little bit of Photoshop work and map coloring. Um, if you haven't already though, check out the Cartographers Guild. Um, we are the premier internet community of fantasy map makers and this includes science fiction novelists and fantasy novelists, role playing gamers, really anybody who loves cartography at all comes to this website thousand users of people who just love to talk about maps so check it out when you get a few minutes all right well, let's get on to our task at hand today um, what I'm gonna do is basically show you the sp specific functions of Photoshop that you can use to color a black line drawing specifically a black line drawing of a map of course since uh, this is a cartography tutorial but the things that I'm gonna show you are not specialized in any way I know that because when I first started learning Photoshop I did a whole bunch of internet searches and what I found was that people coloring comic books graphic designers artists of any kind pretty much use the same process in Photoshop to color a black line drawing as I'm gonna show you right here specifically on a map so nothing specialized at all which is perfect because I'm designing this tutorial to be for absolute beginners this is the tutorial I wish I would have had when I first opened up Photoshop and to be honest with you I felt overwhelmed by this program it's so big and so complicated to me if you have made anything in Photoshop before or have any experience of, of this of any kind with this program go on and find something more complicated check out the cartographers guild uh, tutorial section check out zombie nirvana games by butch curry he does a great job with uh, fantasy cartography check out pixel perfect by burt monroy there's plenty of tutorials out there that will give you a lot of powerful and interesting techniques but this is just a basic basic tutorial here so let's go ahead and get going the first thing when you open up photoshop you're going to see a screen that looks a lot like this maybe there'll be a welcome screen here you can get rid of that um, but if you're doesn't look exactly like this don't worry about it I'm using uh, Photoshop CS3 which at the moment that I'm recording this is the most updated version but the things that I'm going to show you would work all the way back to the you know pre CS Photoshop versions as well as Photoshop elements and such nothing nothing all that unusual for this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to color a scanned in map so I'm assuming that you've created a map by hand um, and you've had access to a scanner and put it into the uh, digital format in your computer probably a JPEG or something like that um, now I do want to say before I actually open up and start coloring my map that you can create of course your entire map right within Photoshop and I do that just as often as I create one um, in hard copy form and scan it in um, but I think that this is the simplest way to uh, get us started so let's start off by finding it um, of course just as you would imagine with any other type of uh, application like this you're gonna open it up I've got a whole bunch of my scans right in here click on it and click open and miracle of miracles there it is it's showing it right on the screen there now first order of business is to kinda of clean up this image since I've scanned it in, my scanner has picked up some of the blotches, some of maybe the uh, discolorations in the paper, maybe fingerprint. It could have even picked up some of my original line drawings. I see some light lines over here, which might end up being my pencil marks that I inked over because this was originally a pencil drawing and I inked it. So what I want to do is clean up all of that. And there's a really, really easy way to do that. And that is to come up here into my image pull down menu and then go to adjustments and when I go there you can see that it's listed off a ginormous list of adjustments I can make as I've said before Photoshop is a really complicated and powerful program um, and you've got all this um, tweaking that you could do with it but what I'm gonna be concerned with are levels so I'm gonna click on the levels right there and it brings up this levels window we don't need to really worry about output levels or channels or things like that all we need to be worried about are these sliders right here and they're very very simple the white one when I slide it over makes the whites whiter it basically brightens it up in that respect and you can see if I take it over too far it really kind of takes over the entire image and the black one you already know it when I pull it on over it's gonna darken things up a bit so if I pull it over here things get really really muddy all I need to do is brighten it up a little bit to kind of get rid of some of the some of the uh, dark elements and there we go click OK BAM she's done 
All right. Now, next thing that we need to do is prepare this image right here for the color. Now, the first thing to, to realize with Photoshop, if you've never used an application like this, and I remember it was even slightly confusing for me, is that you think about this as like a piece of paper. It even looks like a piece of paper. But Photoshop doesn't look at it like that. It looks at it as a piece of paper, a background layer, with a whole bunch of different transparency layers over top of it. It's much like tracing paper you would use as a kid, or like, say, in an encyclopedia, those uh, uh, pictures of the human anatomy where there's transparency layers that have like bones and veins and things like that and you flip them over and eventually when you get them all on there they add up to the end image. So Photoshop is looking at this as just one part of a lot of different sheets or what they're called are layers in Photoshop. When we look over in this window here you can see that there is a layers window and underneath it we've got some of these things that are faded out and then a background layer. Now once we get going with this you're going to see that a whole bunch of layers get added on to this that together make up the image that Photoshop shows us. So the first thing we've got is the background layer and if you can just see this little tiny thumbnail that's the image that we've got over here on the screen. Whenever you open up an image like this into Photoshop, it automatically puts it in the background. It assumes that that's the thing that we're going to add layers on top of. Now, for the method that I'm going to show you, we're not doing it that way. So we need to tell Photoshop this is not the background layer. And it's very easy to do. All you do is double-click on this. And it'll bring up this new layer window. It gives some adjustments and things like that. But all we want to do is give it a new name. Let's call it the Original Map call it whatever you wanted to of course. Click OK and suddenly we're back with we've got basically the exact same thing with uh, a different name down here. Now why did I do that? Well what we do not want to do is we don't want to draw on our original map. Again this is not just like a normal piece of paper that you're coloring on with crayons or something and once you've colored it oops, I made a mistake, I can't do anything about it, or you used ink, or you spilled paint, or something like that. What we want to do is work with the layers because that gives an incredible amount of flexibility. 